All right, internet, welcome back. So we were uh, pleasantly surprised, or at least I was pleasantly surprised, to see that Natas 32 is almost identical to Natas 31. So this is a freebie, which I love, um, because we're almost done. We have two more levels and we're finished. So with this one, uh, I'm gonna walk through it pretty quickly because like I said, it's very identical. So we can see that we're presented with something very similar. Um, they basically state that they're gonna convert our CSV file into an HTML table format. And below here, we have a new sentence. This new sentence basically is stating that uh, it wants to see if we can actually execute code on the server. So do we have um, remote execution uh, access? And basically they state that there's a binary sitting in the web root um, that you need to execute. So web root is basically the file, the, the file location where everything else is sitting. So wherever we upload this file, that's where the other files are uh, kind of placed. So if we go in here and we upload a file, it's going to give us back whatever we have. So we have our text here. And then remember how I said previously that if there were more uh, values inside of the file that I uploaded, so more numbers, more strings, et cetera, that'd be basically, they'd be broken down into a table, something like this, right? And it's going to have text in here, numbers, et cetera. So that's all good and dandy. Um, we can see the URL is the same. So we're, we're still going to the same index Perl file. And we have our source code. So this is all good. Um, like I said in the previous one, there's not many answers out there. So uh, I found two answers that were semi-useful. Um, so this one is not the best, just kind of gives you the solution and, and talks to some stuff. Uh, and then this one actually provides a decent overlay and talk through what's happening. Um, I'd say that between the two, you kind of get the gist of what's happening here. So um, like previously, uh, to basically gain access to this uh, challenge, and I recommend you going to Nisos31 to watch that solution from my solutions I've provided, because that explains a lot of what we're doing here. I'm not going to rehash everything there, um, but at a, high, at a high level, I'll kind of explain what we're doing. At a high level, we're uploading file, right? And there's a weakness in the code here. So let me go to the code actually to walk you through, and the code is identical. The code hasn't changed. It's all the same. So the weakness here basically sits within this location. So this is the first weakness. This is the second weakness, and this is the third weakness. So to take advantage of this, basically we're gonna upload a file into this location here. But when you upload a file here, you're not uploading a single file, but you're gonna upload uh, your file. So say you have a file here. And then before that, we're actually gonna upload a string. And that string's gonna be argv. Reason we're putting argv is because that's a way to manipulate the param uh, method to ingest uh, commands that we're gonna put in. So our commands are gonna be malicious, and that's where our commands will go. And once we've uploaded these two files simultaneously, uh, when you do the upload, the variable name here can uh, only take in one value, or at least only evaluates one value. So the evaluated value that it evaluates first is gonna be the first value it sees, which is gonna be our string, which is argv. And once we've done that, um, we're basically gonna inject a malicious command, and that command's gonna be injected up here in the URL. And to do that, we're at first, we're gonna actually with this challenge, instead of injecting anything, at first we need to see what's in the web root folder. Because remember, in this piece here, they mentioned that there's a binary file there. We don't know what that is, but we know it's in the web root. So we need to basically ls um, list out all the files inside of this location. So to do that, um, we're gonna leverage the lengthy command, and let me clear all this out so it's not all convoluted. Oops. So we're gonna, we have a lengthy uh, curl command here that I broke down in the previous session that'll break down for you once again. So if we come in here, um, it's, a, it's a long curl command and there's a series of things we need to do here. And let me change the coloring. So first things first with this large command is uh, when running through this, I hijacked somebody else's. So the first thing we wanna do is actually we need to update the authentication uh, cookie or session that we have here because this is from Natas31. So we want to update that to Natas32. Um, and to get that, what we would do is we would just jump into our browser here. Once you've uploaded something, so upload this, you just want to inspect the page and go to your network settings. And I'll refresh so I can get some information here. So you can see our post request is right at the top, and that's us posting the file to the server. And then if you go in here and scroll down to the request headers, you'll see that there's an uh, authorization piece here. And you just basically want to take that cookie. And we'll take basically the first portion of it. We'll copy that. And then we'll put that into a curl command. So instead of taking what was provided here, we'll actually replace that with our authentication cookie. So that's the first thing, right? So we have our we are authentication piece of putting in our username and password um, for Natas31 to get Natas32. That's first. 
Next thing is we're actually going to upload the arg, uh, the string command, as I mentioned previously. So we're going to upload that to manipulate and uh, take advantage of the vulnerability that we're attacking. And then we have our basic file that we're going to upload here. And you can see that that, that file can be named whatever. Um, they've named this. And once we've uploaded all that stuff, I'm going to scroll down a bit. Uh, you can see we're doing an upload submit. So this is the type of uh, us basically pushing upload on the screen there. And then come down here, this is what actually matters. So here we have the URL and the malicious command we're going to insert. So here we have the base URL, which we've seen already. We're going to add a question mark here so we know that we're inputting a command. And then we have a few options here. And these are a few steps that we're going to take. So the first step we're going to take is we're going to actually ls. We're going to list out all the files inside of that directory, the web root directory. And then we're actually going to run, I did this, this is something I've did, nobody else, I haven't seen this in other solutions, but I wanted just to, I wanted to see what the binary was made of because to know it's a binary, you can kind of just tell by, uh, you know, catting it out or executing it. Um, but I just wanted to play around with it and see what was inside of it. So I did basically um, a dash capital C with a hex dump prior to, to get the canonical output. And then the last thing is actually executing the get password. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go back to the command string here, the first command I'm going to run, let me run through these really quick, is an ls. So, and an interesting thing to point out here, which is slightly confusing, is actually we have to add a dot um, after the ls to ensure that it executes. I'm not sure why it's doing that, um, but when you do this command, it's going to cat out basically all the different files sitting inside of this directory. And to trick the terminal, because I know that it messes around with me sometimes, I'll go in here. And, oh no, this is all smudged. Okay, what if we make it a little longer? Oops, there we go, this, here we go. That's better. All right, so if I do that, haha, <laughs> terminal will get me this time. So you can see there's a series of hidden files. And the reason we can see the hidden files is because we didn't just do ls, but we did ls-la. And these are switches inside of the ls command. And when we do the ls command, we're actually going to get more than just the file names. We're going to get a series of other pieces of data. And we're also going to get the hidden files. And you can see the hidden files uh, based off the dot here. So we have a few hidden files there, but we also have these files here. So we have a git password, a git power, password.c, and a git password.c.temple. So we're actually going to execute the um, this git password here. And you can see that if you look at the permissions here, that we actually have executable, executable access as the user inside of this uh, location. Another thing to point out is they mentioned that it was a web root. So I'm assuming this is just the web root here or the folder that we're sitting in that has that's containing everything here. All right, so we know that this is the file we want to execute on. So if we go back into our terminal, I'm going to just up a few of these. And I'm actually going to hex dump it out first. So remember how I said I wanted to hex dump this out? So to do that, uh, you just basically do in a hex dump in your command. You add a space, which is URL encoded. Then you add a dash capital C, which is a switch for canonical dumps. And then you're going to basically add your dot afterwards and then your space and your pipe, which is the item like that. And the reason I knew about the hex dump is I'll jump here and show you. Um, I was basically reading through and I knew that XXD and hex dump were ways to actually dump binaries, but I didn't know what the canonical switch was. So I basically had to Google it like everything else I have to do. Um, and once we've Googled it, uh, we do enter and you can see that it pipes out a whole bunch of stuff here. This is uh, the hex dump and the binary output of that file. And you can see that there's some text here that's semi readable. Um, you can see some information about the system that this file is sitting on. And there's some more information there. And actually, I think there's a, in here, there's a Natas. There's a mention of Natas32 in here, actually, as well, I saw. I could try to crap it out, but that's too much effort. Here we go. ETC, Natas, WebPass, Natas33. So I'm assuming this binary is actually doing some sort of call out to the location that we know of, and we know that there's uh, an answer inside of. So it's actually, it looks like it's calling out to that location and then it's going to print that out for us on, on our behalf through this binary file. So if I go back down here, so we've, we've ls we've, um, did a hex dump of the binary. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to print out the password. We're going to execute the file. And to do that, I have an option in here. It's here. So 
we will explain this briefly. So as per usual, um, we're basically going to add our question mark here. And then we're going to basically do a dot slash, which is the execution, um, the execution kind of syntax within Linux. And we're going to do our file, get password, add our space, and then also we're going to add our pipe afterwards. So once we've done all that, if we come back in here and do enter, and we see that it's printed out our password. So we have all of our HTML, but at the very end, we have our password sitting right there. So internet, that one was easy and simple, and I hope the rest are so we can, you know, cruise on and get over with this, uh, the CTF challenge. So I will see you on 33.